Hello, I'm uh, Leslie from Humanizing Autonomy, and we're teaching autonomous systems uh, how to understand human behavior. So what we're doing is we're building a global standard for how autonomous mobility systems are able to interact with people, because at the moment they're not that good at it. So we build a human intent prediction software that understands the full range of human behavior so that vehicles are able to understand how to navigate cities safely using only camera footage. The only thing we need is, as the previous pre presentation, or the first presentation, just a CMOS camera. So we were three founders from Imperial. Uh, we graduated about one and a half years ago. And now we've built this amazing team of deep learning engineers and computer vision uh, scientists. Uh, specifically, we were able to find someone who had a PhD in behavioral psychology for pedestrian behavior specifically, with a master's in data science, so very happy to have found him. And then also a PhD in deep learning for the safety of path planning of autonomous robotics. So I think that's quite a nice uh, first couple of hires that we were able to find for the company. And now we've built up a team of six other uh, deep learning engineers to work on the challenge from some of the best schools in the world. So what we're doing is we're improving the safety and efficiency of autonomous mobility systems by understanding and predicting human behavior in cities. So this should have been a video, uh, but it's not embedded in the presentation, so I'll just show you this one immediately, which is in this video you would have seen people moving and I would have asked you what can you see in this video. And it's a very complex situation. We as humans are able to understand the context of this, this, this scene. We're able to see where people are walking, whether they're distracted, whether they're on a bike or not. But at the moment, all state-of-the-art software can see at the, at the moment is objects. It knows that that's a person, it knows that that's a bicycle, but it doesn't see what's inside the bounding box. It doesn't understand what these people are actually doing, that the, the guy in the front is on his on his phone, that the, one, the lady in the back is walking with his suitcase, has no idea. And that's why, at the moment, they can't drive through cities. Self-driving cars are driving through Mountain View, they're driving through Phoenix, Arizona. There are no people there. So if you want to put that car in London, it's not going to go anywhere, which is why we built this software. And now I'm going to switch. Let's see. Yes. So there should be also a cool song to make you feel good about this video. But uh, basically what it's showing is um, we are able to detect different features of human behavior, such as where they are, where they're looking at, where they're predicted to go, whether they're distracted or not, whether they have a phone in their hands, whether they're aware of the vehicle, whether they're going to cross, or how risky that pedestrian is, just from a single camera. So we're able to apply that in street scenes like this, on moving vehicles, on static images, uh, or on CCTV cameras for infrastructure safety. And that's something that we're really excited about, that we've kicked off a couple of collaborations uh, in, the, uh, in the past months that I will also tell you about. We even detect umbrellas, very important in London because people behave very differently in different environments. So you need to build different behavioral models to understand what people are going to do in the future. And having an umbrella that blocks your view is not very beneficial for safety of people walking in streets. So how we built that technology is through a novel AI approach. We're actually combining deep learning models, supervised machine learning models, and even logical formulas to come up with very complex types of human behavior. And we do that through behavioral psychology. That's what the guy is doing that I told you in the beginning. He's looking at how people behave in streets, makes it measurable, and then we have computer vision deep learning teams, a team that is translating those findings into models that can recognize it purely from camera footage. And with that, we're building the largest proprietary data set of human behavior in cities worldwide. 
And the way we've been able to do that is because we built this modular prediction system. Instead of trying to understand human behavior in one model, we actually built separate features. We have more than 45 features that are able to recognize different types of human behavior that we can allow to talk or not allow to talk. So for example, if you want to understand whether someone is distracted, you need to know whether they have a phone. You need to know whether they're looking away from the vehicle, whether they're looking at the vehicle, whether they've been blocked by a lamppost. All this kind of information is really difficult to capture in one model. But if you have separate models for all of them and allow those to talk, you can build a very modular prediction system that allows you to use that technology for many different applications. So we've received some interesting press that I'm not going to bore you with. This is what I'm really excited about, the partnerships. We've focused on the smart transportation market. As I told you, we want to build the global standard for human-machine interactions. But as a startup, it's good to focus in the beginning. So we're targeting the mobility space mostly, where we're working with Airbus, such as uh, customers such as Airbus, uh, Daimler, Mercedes-Benz, Nissan, Koito, a tier one supplier, uh, Kyocera, which is a semiconductor producer, and The Ride, which is a public transportation company. And we're doing that with the help of great partners, such as Imperial. Uh, also one of your competitors, uh, the University of Michigan. Um, and we're doing that in two ways. So we're working on automated vehicles, where we're making level two, level three um, automated vehicles safer by warning human drivers. Then we're working with level four and level five automated vehicles, so those are fully autonomous. At the moment, they're only driving through Mountain View, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to expand that to London within this year. And uh, then there are V2X infrastructure systems, so that's allowing the infrastructure to communicate to drivers of vehicles or autonomous vehicles uh, by warning them of risky pedestrians that are seen through CCTV cameras. So overall, we're building this global standard uh, for how autonomous mobility systems interact with people. If you have any automated uh, mobility system or just something that moves that has a camera, let me know, because I'm sure that we'll be able to allow that object to interact with people in a better way. Thank you.